Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. In Anime Studio Pro 9, there have been some improvements as to how we can edit keyframes in the timeline. This tutorial will cover those new methods. First of all, it is now much easier to add a keyframe wherever you want on the timeline. Let's say, for instance, I move to frame 72 on the timeline, and I want to create a keyframe for this channel. Instead of grabbing, let's say, the Transform Layer tool and clicking on the canvas to create a keyframe, I could simply now come down here to the channel and double-click to create a keyframe. So that really simplifies the process now when it comes to adding keyframes. Also, this works in the motion graph. So if I go to the motion graph tab, and I am in this channel currently, I can simply come over here to frame 84 and double click. And I've now added a keyframe for every property of this channel. So that works really well and can help speed up your workflow when working in Anime Studio. Now let me come back here to my channels. Next is the ability to move keyframes past each other. Let's say, for instance, I highlight these three frames. Now, in the past, in past versions, if I tried to move these ahead of, let's say, these two keyframes, basically what would happen is you would run into the problem where they would collide. You would bump into it and you couldn't go past that certain point. Well, now, as you can see, I can move past any keyframe I want. Now this can create some interesting movements for you. However, it works as it should, and I think that as a new feature, you will find beneficial. When in graph mode now, you have the ability to scale keys vertically. So let's say at this point in my timeline, like right here, I want to adjust this point of the graph. I could hold down my left mouse button, and as you can see, I can go up and down now as well as left and right. But of course, this gives us much more flexibility when working in graph mode. And you can see I can alter the X property here and come down here and alter the Y property and so on. Okay, now let me bounce back here to the channels um, tab. And I'm just gonna add a couple more channels here. So I'll come over here to frame 12 and I'll just expand this and rotate it slightly. So I have some channels pop in here for this example. And I can do the camera here as well. So I'll pop to frame one, add a camera keyframe and so on. So, okay, now you are working on your animation and you want to add a keyframe for all the channels. You know the double click method now, but that only adds a keyframe for that certain channel. But now if you go up to animation, add keyframe, this will now add a keyframe for all current channels. And you can see it even added a keyframe now for the um, point motion portion of the animation. So you now have keyframes for all of those points and that allows you to lock in the animation at that certain point for all instances of your animation channels. So that's uh, another useful feature for working on the timeline. Another new feature is the ability to edit multiple keyframes at once. So just as an example here, I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff for right now and pop back here and grab my transform layer tool. You can see I have a path now. It's just an example I created, but when I page through here, you can see I have some movement going on. Now let's say for whatever reason, I made this animation and I realized I made a mistake that I want the animation to take place over here on this portion of my screen. I want all this movement to take place over here. Well, in the past, you know, you had to essentially move every keyframe individually. You would have to move this one, then page over to frame 12, and then move that one. And just kind of keep piecing the animation together where you wanted it to go. And this could be very tedious. However, now, if you come down here to your timeline and highlight all of the keyframes and then move the animation or that particular keyframe where you want it. So 
I can move it like over here and release. You can see now it moves that entire animation where you want it to go because you have all those keyframes selected. Now this works too, for instance, if I only selected, like let's say for instance, I select these three keyframes and then I move them. You can see now it alters the path, but those three keyframes have now been moved according to the animation that has taken place up to that point. So that can be very useful and a time saver when working on your animations. And this works for point movement as well. To demonstrate this further, I have created another example. Here I have an object that is edited only by points, and you can see that on my timeline through the channels. And what I did here with the points is as I came in and I just did this quick animation where it stretches back and forth. So let's say for whatever reason I've finished this and I'm like, oh, well, I want to alter my points. I actually don't want this shape. So I'm on frame one and I can come in here and I can adjust the shape however I um, see fit, however I want it. I come in here and I can just create a different looking shape like so. So this is the shape I wanted. But of course, as it pages through, since we already created keyframes for this particular um, animation with the points, you can see now that it morphs back when we hit the second keyframe. So if I page back here and just get rid of this, what I can do now, using the same method I showed you with moving a bunch of keyframes, I can highlight all these keyframes and now come in here with my translate point tool and create the shape I want. And so now when I page through, you can see that those points retained their shape while at the same time they're going through and being resized and so on. So again, this can really help you speed up your workflow. And I believe these new improvements will be an asset to all of you animators out there. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Dot com. Thanks for watching guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so be sure to check those out and I will see you next time.